Hi friends, I'm Madhav from Easy Approach and it's the 25th video of Flutter video series. In this video, we'll learn a very important topic of so far that is about asynchronous programming in Flutter. All the instructions in Flutter is executed by default sequentially one after one and it is executed somewhere in Flutter which is called isolate and here it is in green. Now suppose we have some instruction inside the on press of this floating action button to execute now suppose that first instruction inside the on press would take few microseconds to execute and the second instruction which is actually to download something from the internet would take almost 5 seconds which is so much as this is downloading something from internet and the last one would take again say microsecond some microseconds so initially the first instruction would go for the execution to the isolate and all the other instruction would wait for its finishing so that they can go also for execution and once the first instruction is executed and then second one can go. But since the second instruction would take up to 5 seconds, all the other part of the UI during the execution of this second instruction would get stuck for 5 seconds as the executor is actually busy in downloading something from the internet. So you cannot interact with any part of the UI while the second instruction is executing. Now after 5 seconds the execution will be completed and then third one would go for the execution and it would take few microseconds and then your UI will be free again and you can interact with other part of the UI. But the user has to wait 5 seconds to interact with the app and hence it is so inappropriate as far as the user experience is concerned. But fortunately, we have a better way to do it in Flutter. We can do one thing. Suppose if the download function, which is actually taking so much time, is defined somewhere in our application, say here, what we can do, we can request the Flutter to run this function asynchronously in the same isolate, as this is taking so much time, and we can do it by making it a special function. And we call this a special function a future in Flutter. So what we have to do in order to make our ordinary function a future, we just need to add a future before the function name. So this is how you can change your ordinary function to the future. And then the execution pattern will be like the first instruction will go into the isolate for execution and once it is finished after a few microseconds the second instruction will go into the isolate. And since second instruction is actually a future and can be run asynchronously in the same time the third will go into the isolate during uh, or while the execution of the downloading function which is actually the second instruction. And the both instruction can be run concurrently. And since there are no other instruction left in the on press, this would not block the UI. We are not going into the detail that how Flutter and Dart makes it possible to run two different instructions concurrently in the same isolate, as we will be covering it in the later videos. For now, we use future whenever we need to perform long or time taking tasks or whenever we need to initiate some sort of network request or to download some data from the internet and show on the screen. So this is it from this video, it's just the introduction of future. In the next two videos, we'll be covering future and another important widget that's uh, normally used uh, combined with this feature that is called future builder. So if you like this video, please share my video and, and if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe my channel so that you can get the notification of the videos that I'm gonna upload. Thank you for watching.